G'day fools, Scott Phillips here from The Motley Fool, and I'm bringing you another in what's, at least internally, one of our most popular series. Well, they're all popular. Well, you don't have a favorite child, do you? This is our favorite investing books. And as I've said before, this is one of those series that, well, we get to share the books we like, and hopefully the ones that you will enjoy reading that either are great reads, have some great investment tips, or preferably both. The books that we think can help you become an even better investor than you already are today. And with me this week to do exactly that is Ed Vesely. How are you, buddy? I'm not too bad, Scott. How are you? I'm out exceptionally well, thank you very much. Mate, you are bringing one of, I think, the seminal investment books. Maybe I've said that a few times, but there is a probably, I'm going to say half a dozen that you'd struggle to find any investor who would vote against. If you had to put together, you know, half a dozen investing books, say these are the only ones you should read. I reckon this one, Stocks for the Long Run by Jeremy Siegel is one that would be on almost everybody's list. It is one of those books that just makes the case and makes it so eloquently, so forcefully, so strongly. It becomes almost one of those foundation texts that really talks to why we do what we do. So without further ado, mate, tell me about Stocks for the Long Run. Yeah, no worries at all. It's a book I actually picked up originally. I think it was the second edition. That, that, that's back in the early 2000s and uh, it's up to the fifth edition now which is still actually quite old it's around two, 2013 mm. when it last got published but the lessons you can obtain from this book i think are, are timeless and mm. stock for the long run it, it says what it is what it says on the tin right so we are investing practically in equities for the very long term mm. the guy yeah. who wrote the book uh, jeremy siegel he's, he's a professor of finance at the university of pennsylvania what in the book is he examines stock and bond return going way back to 1802. So that's quite a while. <laughs> yeah. But not just since then also, he's actually considered a number of periods within that last 200 or so years. Mm. And um, you're looking at, uh, I suppose, a consistency of results from owning shares or equities over periods of 20 years or longer. So for mm. me, it was a very reassuring book because I thought to myself when I started investing, well, first of all, how, how do I know when to invest? What's a good time? Uh, the truth is, if you if you take the mindset where you invest with a view to just switching off the market and just investing for many, many years out, about five or 10 or, or even beyond that, then uh, the returns are likely to be uh, higher than you would expect with lower volatility. Now, volatility is simply, I think, um, how would you, you, you look, it's basically a function of the number of times that you look at the stock market. I could look at stocks all day. Right, and say, right. Geez, the market's right. In fact, today they're down 1%, right? So we're looking at a situation where, oh, look, if you're going to consider starting to invest today, you would say to yourself, oh, geez, maybe not today. Maybe I'll wait till the stocks <laughs> go up or wait until the headlines right. and so on. But yeah. it really, the book itself proves that um, if you've got a um, holding period of one, three, five, and 10 years, there is some chance that you could still uh, experience a loss of return or, or a loss yeah. of capital. But over holding periods of 20 years or greater, you're likely to see a positive positive return for that period. Now, to anyone who hasn't been exposed to this book, who hasn't read it, and is listening to this for the first time, you would think, oh, for goodness sake, how is anyone going to invest for 20 years? But I just come back to the fact, well, we've got superannuation, which has been around since, in terms of its compulsion, it's been around since 1993. And by definition, we have to invest for the long run, okay? So I think, the lessons I get out of this book is that if we just maintain exposure to equities when you're younger and as you get older, and even if you're retired, if you've got a life expectancy of another 20 or 30 years, that to me is still the long run. So I would consider investing this way, and this is what I've done all my life, uh, despite the fact that uh, in the last well, 100 or so years, we've had two, we've had a Great Depression, we've had the Korean War. Uh, we've had mm -hmm. the equities funk of the 1970s due to higher inflation and interest rates. We've had the Asian financial crisis in 97, September 11, and of course we've had COVID-19. So we've had all of this thrown at us and there could even be more problems coming down the track, but I don't think there's any surprise to that. I think the uncertainties of, of life and investing in economies and, uh, and you invest in economies through the stock market in the main is, is that despite all of these uncertainties, the reason why we invest in equities is because we, we believe that uh, people, uh, business people, um, governments, we all, we all want a better life. So we're also, also looking for that uh, better mousetrap. There will always be a better product or service which can be sold to mm, mm. Uh, someone 
is willing to pay for it. And Scott, you've been quite fond of looking at the, the Vanguard chart, which I think goes back to the 1970s. And I think that illustrates yeah, my does. point. And the, yeah. yeah, there's volatility all the way through it. You can see the ups and mm-hmm. you can see the downs, but geez, the long-term trend is pretty obvious. So yeah, I like uh, that, that, mate. It's a really good, really good point, Carl. Yeah, that's the thesis of the book. So look, it, it covers mm-hmm. a lot. Um, it's not just about the long run necessarily. It is a, It is in some ways a textbook. It does argue the case for equities. It does discuss in quite a lot of detail the GFC of 2008. But just on that point, Scott, you might have thought to yourself, well, maybe not you, maybe not anyone else, but who would have thought that the markets in Australia were down 18%? Uh, we don't really think about that these days because we probably don't even remember it. And that's precisely the point of investing in the long for the long run. So the book goes on and talks about a lot of these things. It's a US focused book, uh, as well as looking at returns since 1802. It talks about the impact of taxes on, on stock returns, the absolute benefits of deferring capital gains, uh, the sources of shareholder value, which is always, always the earnings from the company, and importantly, the, the retained earnings from within the business. So for example, if, if a company was to earn on a per share basis, on a per share basis and it, it paid out 40 cents as a dividend, it'd still have another 60 cents there to, to reinvest. And this is where the magic happens, I think, for investing in equities. What does it do with that 60 cents on the dollar? The company might decide to invest in more marketing or it might invest in more uh, um, capacity for infrastructure, for, for its supply chains, uh, growing its markets, growing its reach in terms of reaching more, more customers here or overseas. So whatever mm. a company does with that 60 cents of retained value, can actually be adding more more gain for for long term holders down the track, and especially f- for those shareholders who don't sell. Sure, there's going to be reasons to to sell sometimes, but if we can retain, this is important. If we can retain our exposure to equities rather than worrying about particular stocks, I think we're mm. going to have a pretty good outcome over the very long run. So, the yeah, book- it's a really really important point. Right. Here you go. No, I was going to say just, it, it's a, it's an important point because what, so there's. Plenty of books written every year with with investors, authors, perspectives on everything, right? What two books I really, really like are, are Seagull Stocks for the Long Run and the Jim Collins book, Good to Great. And I like them both for the very same reason, which is they don't just use the motherhood statements or the anecdotes or the, you know, the, the convenient arguments. They literally go straight back to the data. In Good to Great, they look at a dozen companies, 10 companies, I think it is, and compare long-term returns with the equivalent companies. With Stocks for the Long Run, as you say, it's not just Seagull saying, Here's what I think. Here's what I wish was true. Here's what I reckon will happen. He goes back, as you say, 200 years and says, look, here's what the data simply says. This is what tends to happen. And while we're the first to say, both because it's right, because ASIC requires us to, that past performance is no guarantee. If you can find a 200 year history track record of of success and for the reasons you've highlighted, mate, and that's the other thing I like about the book is it doesn't just say, well, here's the data. Let's, you know, <laughs> let's go to lunch. It literally outlines and underscores the sorts of things, as you say, the sources of value, the benefits and, and otherwise of taxation, the different returns over different time periods. It's it's an empirical study, not just a an author saying, I think you should buy shares and here's why. I think that's important for people who otherwise might be a little bit skeptical, concerned, worried, as you, as you rightly point out yourself, uh, when you start thinking, well, how, what do I do? When do I do it? How do I do it? Am I sure? Again, we can't, give, ever, can't ever give guarantees, but Siegel's book is a really, really clear I think, you know, clear eyed view of the last couple of centuries and, and Mark, Mark Twain said history may not repeat, but it tends to rhyme. Uh, if, if we've seen that for a couple of hundred years, it'd be a brave person to believe the trend is all of a sudden over, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, look, I think what uh, Siegel is not saying too is, is that you can't lose. You, you can absolutely lose, but that's the whole point of taking a longer term approach. And I think in the main, he's talking about investing via something like an index fund or an ETF, which is a very broad based portfolio. I mean, of course, you can invest in a particular stock and due to the problems in one company, you could actually lose all of your money. But across the board, you could actually find that if you retain exposure to equities as opposed to cash or, or, or bonds like um, or corporate bonds or, or treasury bonds, for example, look, you're probably going to have a better return just simply by retaining exposure and holding on and not panicking when th- things get a little bit dicey in the market. As I say today, the market is down, what's today, the 5th of October. It's down around 1%. It could fall further. It may not. But when I invest, I, I look to invest for the very long term. I've been through this before. Look, I know that interest rates have fallen a lot since the early 1980s. There's been a downward trend in interest rates, and that certainly has been a a, a tailwind for, for markets. But um, the studies of this book, studies from Siegel, demonstrate that in a lot of different political and macroeconomic environments, 
stocks tend to do very well. Now, a big point about this book is he's not saying too that um, stocks can't uh, have the same sort of return. They can actually have the same sort of returns in the future, but then, then again, they may not. One important point to highlight is that, and this is the bad news, is that price to earnings ratios right now are higher than anywhere they've been in the past. And this was 10 years ago, but that's certainly the case today. So it does imply future returns from the markets may or can be lower. But the good news is, is that it's still likely, based on empirical evidence, that stocks will still remain the best investment for all of those seeking those longer term steady gains. And they're only steady if we take that longer term approach. If we looked at markets, as I say, every day, they're anything but st steady or reliable. But if you're certainly going to be looking at uh, over one, three, five, ten years plus, which is what we should all be doing and something that we espouse at The Motley Fool, then uh, I, it's just a, it's a no-brainer. Look, there's risk everywhere. Uh, you have to remember too that when we're talking about uh, investing for the long run, you also have to remember that the uh, certainty is much, much higher than say investing in cash or bonds. Bonds are a separate story now with the interest rates so low. I, I won't even comment on those. That's not really what we're talking about here. But if we're going to accept higher returns and if we can accept okay, I'll hold my money and I'll keep it preserved within superannuation turn 60, that's all well and good, but you still can't you still can't afford to panic. You have to actually accept that there's going to be a degree of uncertainty uh, coming from these higher returns. It's simply the way it is. If you want absolute certainty, then you invest in cash. Term deposit might be getting 0.5 of 1%. That's well below the cost of living. Um, I just don't think there's any future in holding cash other than using cash as a basis for placing that cash into the market down the term, term down down the track, I should say, when there's opportunities. But if you're investing broadly across the market and you're going to hold for many, many years, I think the returns are going to be better. In fact, Siegel does say that, and this is the US example, that uh, on average, going way back, uh, the real returns, that's the returns after adjusting for inflation, they've averaged around 6.6% .6 per year. So that allows for an almost a doubling in the purchasing power almost every decade. So at the end of the day, we invest because we want more purchasing power. Okay, we don't just want higher, um, a higher valuation on our portfolio. It's actually got to be in front of the cost of living. So if we can get a return of six point six percent or higher over the long run, that beats inflation. Then uh, it's clearly a good outcome. So that's Certainly what is, I like mate, on this you've done a, yeah. yeah, you've done a lovely job of summarising that the concept. Also reminded too, mate, the seagull was one of the few voices. Uh, I'm pleased to say we were among those voices, but Siegel, one of the few voices in the public markets in March and April of 2020, talking about exactly this sort of thing. And basically, yeah. you know, when the market had dropped 20, 30, 40%, saying, look, if, if profits went to zero for a year, that would take about 10% off valuations. If they were zero for two years, it'd be 20% off the valuations, and yet shares were down 30 to 40%. He was saying, this is not a reasonable fall. He is a, a very sensible, calm head, uh, and again, research back, data backed head uh, among among what can be a, a volatile and outrageous uh, mm -hmm. commentary. We, I saw one uh, one number, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, basically saying, "Look, you know, get ready for an eighty percent crash in the S and P five hundred." And those people get reported every time, and they get written up, and people worry about it. And there's people like Siegel saying, "Yep, I'm not going to get the headlines, but just remember to stay calm, invest as you say for the long run." And that's a, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a wonderful message from a really well written book. It is a bit textbooky but it's not too bad it's very much yeah. worth getting it getting your head around and getting it's getting into really because yeah it's look it's, you know that, that's the thing right it's not about the stories that kind of gloss over the facts it's actually the reverse it's the facts backed up with some stories to explain why they have been stocks have been an attractive place place for your money and why seagull and i think we would agree um expect to be a, a good place to, to have your money over the next 10 20 30 maybe even 200 years mate who knows mm, we'll see well maybe we won't see that our ancestors might Someone will dig this up from YouTube at some at some future point and, and see whether we're right or wrong. All right, Ed, mate, thank you for 100%. bringing your stocks to the long run by Jeremy Siegel. It is one of those books that every significant or serious investor should read. I don't mean serious and boring. I just mean if you're going to get into investing, do yourself a favor, grab a copy of Stocks for the Long Run. As Ed said, his his version was was uh, version two, uh, up to the fifth edition now. So grab one of those. Ed, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And on behalf of Ed, myself, and the whole Motley Fool team. Until next time, fool on.